All right, Joshua 17, let's call this one perspective and subtitle it chariots because in this chapter, we are going to see the second half of the tribe of Joseph get their inheritance assigned or allotted to them. In chapter 16, we saw the first half, the younger son Ephraim get his inheritance and now Manasseh, the older son, is going to find out which portions of the land his descendants are going to get to inhabit. And it's actually going to raise two problems. The first we've already seen, the daughters of Zelophehad were descendants of Manasseh who had no brothers. And according to the law, they would potentially be left out of having a land inheritance to hand down to their children. Well, they brought their issue to Moses. And instead of simply, uh, like we said, sulking on the fact that they would be left out, they won not only an inheritance for themselves, but for every woman in Israel who would potentially face the same problem down the road. And so even though they got their legal rights protected under Moses, we're now going to see them actually inherit under Joshua. But they are not going to be the only ones who are going to find that the land isn't going to be adequate enough for them if they don't speak up, because the tribes of uh, Ephraim and Manasseh are large. And they're not going to get a land apportionment that is originally going to seem like it's sufficient for them. And so they are going to collectively raise that problem to Joshua as well. And he's going to say, look, the problem you've identified, the fact that you've got too many people is actually the solution to your problem. Because you've got enough people to take care of the two problems that are going to seem to uh, face them. Uh, even though they're going to seem to have a land area that might be sufficient enough, the inhabitable land isn't sufficient. So they're going to have to clear a portion of the land. The other problem that has the portion of land that they're getting uh, really less suitable for their numbers than it appears to be is the fact that it's still inhabited by Canaanites. And even though everybody's got to clear the land of Canaanites, not everybody has to clear the land of Canaanites who have chariots, which are uh, in our modern day equivalent. It's like they got tanks and all we got are foot soldiers. And so what he's going to tell them is just like you've identified your numbers as the reason why you are entitled to more land, he's going to say, look at it from a different perspective. Your numbers actually empower you to both clear the land that isn't suitable and clear the inhabitants that seem to be really powerful. And in giving them that advice, he is really uh, not isolating them out for rougher treatment. He's simply hearkening back to something we've already seen out of Caleb who at 85 years old was told by God that he was going to have an inheritance that was inhabited by giants, but he didn't flinch. And the interesting thing about his response is something that I noticed about courage a while ago. I don't remember who first told it to me, but they said, look, courage isn't so much the absence of fear as much as it is the response to fear. See, because Caleb doesn't uh, seem like he's super confident in his own ability at 85 years old to keep fighting giants the way he did when he was 40. But what he says is maybe God will give me the ability just like he did back then. And so understand, Caleb wasn't any more confident in his strength than Manasseh should have been confident in their numbers. But he focused on uh, what God had done for him in the past and how it would potentially help him overcome the size of the problem in front of him. Compare Manasseh. In spite of the resources that they had, young men, not 85 years old, many in number, they focused on the chariots, thus the subtitle. Many of our opportunities in life have to do with our perspective. Sometimes given the same opportunity, if we look at the size of the problem, we will not be able to maximize our potential. And that is the thing that distinguished the early response of Caleb from the early response of the tribe of Manasseh. Caleb, in spite of the very sizable problem in front of him, was able to see potential solutions on his way to overcoming that problem. Manasseh, on the other hand, was about to be defeated before they were even able to start because they fixated on the chariot standing in their way instead of the numbers that they had that were potentially an even greater asset than what Caleb had working for him because they focused on the adversary and not the potential. They were about to basically cheat themselves out of their own inheritance. And in many ways, we're confronted with the same dilemma in life. To the degree we fixate on our problems, we have the potential of blinding ourselves to potential solutions and potential success, which is why we say his best to you as you go forward in him, God willing, not being intimidated by the size of our problems.